Welcome JFL clients. We're glad you could join us for this training session on how to navigate and use the JFL Total Wealth Management Client Portal on Orion. I'm going to walk you through a couple basic features on the site. I'm showing you how to find your account balance, analyze benchmark performances, run reports, and compare different account holdings and performances. I'm going to demonstrate these functions with our demo accounts. Uh, their names are Tommy and Tammy Test. The investment models featured in the accounts are real ones that JFL uses. So some of the assets and information shown in the training session may appear in your portfolios as well. With that being said, let's get started. First thing I wanna show you is how to get to the Orion sign-in pages. And to do that, you would just have to go to our website, jfltotalwealth.net. And then on the top bar, all the way to the right, is account access. So you would click on that, click the Orion banner, and that will bring you to your Orion portal sign-in page. Once you sign in, the first tab that it brings you to is the overview screen. And what this screen shows you is essentially your portfolio makeup. So it shows you how much stock, bonds, and cash that you have. For example, for Tommy and Tammy Test, in all of their accounts, they are 47.72% stock. On the right side of the screen, you'll be able to see the value of your portfolio as of close of market yesterday, how much of this number is invested and how much is sitting in cash. If you wanted to see specific investments, you would click on the asset category under the portfolio. And this would bring up all your individual stock positions. So for example, Schwab US Dividend Equity, they have $29,000 worth of this fund. And this comes out to 604 shares at $48.65. And this fund makes up 2.5% of their overall portfolio. This screen defaults uh, to automatically show you all accounts but if you wanted to look at a specific account, all you would have to do is click on it on the left side here. And as you can see, the screen changed in the middle. So you have different numbers showing up down here and to the right as well. It automatically groups by asset category, which uh, just breaks down into stock, bonds, and cash. You could also group by asset class which breaks down your investments into separate classes. This is more of a detailed look at your portfolio. And then finally, you could also group by registration, which will just break it down by account. This is good to see if you wanna look at which account holds the most weight in your portfolio. So in Tommy and Tammy's case, their joint account is the most heavily weighted with 42.29% of their assets. And then if you wanted to click down, it wouldn't break it down into stock, bonds, and cash, but it would group it by account instead. So the next tab I wanna show you is the performance tab. That's up here. So you select date ranges, uh, in two ways. So the first way you can individually select the dates. So this is the start date. This is the end date. You can click on the boxes, a drop down will come up. And then you can just pick a day, click refresh, and then you'll be able to see that it's changing the data down here. But what we suggest is using something called quick dates. 
So what that is, it'll pre-fill the boxes here, uh, and it does that in a few different selections. So that button is right here, this arrow pointing down. And you can see that it has a couple different options here. Just pick quarter to date, refresh, and it changed the data down here. So an important thing to note here is that the earliest performance that you'll see is the day that your data started downloading from Charles Schwab. And more likely than not, it's probably the day that your assets came over and your Schwab account opened up. So that's just something to note there. So if you wanted to click on since inception, uh, the earliest day that you'll be able to see is that day. So this automatically groups by asset category, which is the easiest way to view this tab, in my opinion. Um, on the bottom, you'll see your overall performance. And this number is net of fees. So this is so this basically says that Tommy and Tammy test accounts grew 3.19% after fees during this period of time. Now this number is in two places. You could either see it down here or to the right of the screen as well. So if you wanted to look at your performance of individual funds, like the overview tab, you would click down on whatever asset category you wanna look at. So that gives you all of your information there. It pulls up the benchmarks that correspond with the specific asset category. So these four benchmarks down here, these are stock benchmarks. So the S&P 500, this is larger companies like an Apple or Amazon. The Russell 2000, that's, that's smaller companies in the Russell 3000 index. This is a European index, and this is a world index that excludes the United States. So we feel that these benchmarks give you a good understanding of what the market overall is doing. So you can see how your stocks are doing compared to what the market's doing overall. So when you're comparing benchmarks, I would simplify the screen um, just because the more numbers you have up there, the more confusing it'll be. Now, when we look at this stuff, we get worried if your performance is a lot higher or a lot lower than the different benchmarks. Your number should be somewhere in the middle between all of these depending on how you're invested. Uh, but because we use a, a combination of different stock bonds and cash, it should be somewhere in the middle here. Um, for example, if, if we were invested 100% in the S&P 500 index, you would get a, a performance similar to this. But because we're 50% stock, we're not gonna get a, a performance like the stock benchmarks numbers. So the next tab is the is the holdings tab. And this gives you similar information as the overview tab, except that it includes cost basis. So just a warning here that the demo accounts, their data is not really clean. So it's gonna, it, the cost basis isn't really fully there. It's not as, as detailed as some of your Orion portals are gonna look but I would only use the holdings tab for, for taxable accounts. So let's go to their joint account. And as you can see, the, the data is a little messed up here. It's showing a zero cost basis. So cost basis is what you buy a security for. And when you sell out of a security, you pay taxes on the gain between the market value and the cost basis. So that's what we're looking at in this tab. It automatically groups by asset category. 
Uh, but like the overview tab, you can group by asset class and registration as well. So this tab is the activity tab. And you pick a certain date range to see the activity in, in your accounts. Now, I, I have to apologize again. That the data here isn't like it'll normally show. So because Tommy and Tammy test or demo accounts, they, they won't have contributions or distributions, which is what this tab shows you. So normally there will be two drop downs in the middle here. One says contributions, one says distributions. If you click on them, they will show you the day that the activity happened from what account and the value. So that's just something to look out for. This also has quick dates like the performance tab. So you can either click on the individual days or click the quick dates drop down, and then it gives you a bunch of options here. So the next thing I'm going to show you are four is the documents tab, and, and this has four of our most popular reports in there. The good thing about Orion is it's super customizable. So if there's something on here that you aren't seeing, let me know and we can work on a report for you. So to run a report, you would click on the corresponding report that you want to see. Click a date range and usually I, I would say run for the whole household, but if you wanted to select a different account, you would be able to do that. So once so I'm going to do quarter to date. So once you pick a date range, click jump, click on generate, and then it'll bring up a PDF version of the report that you can that you can bring up on the screen. So this is the quarterly review performance. And this is a pretty lengthy and detailed report. It's about eight to 10 pages normally. Uh, what it shows you is, is a couple different things. So it'll show you a performance history table. It'll show you the market value of your accounts on the end date of the period that you ran. And uh, just the disclosure, we're doing this webinar during the coronavirus pandemic. So the year to date and one year numbers are going to look pretty bleak. So just a warning there. It has an activity summary that shows you any contributions, distributions made over the period. And another thing I wanted to point out is it also shows your advisory fees paid over the period as well. So if you wanna know what, how much you're, you're paying JFL, this is where that would be. It also shows you your portfolio composition. So how much stock, bond, and cash that you have breaks it down into market value and then percentage as well. But it also has estimated annual income. So what that is, that basically projects any dividends or interest payments that your stock or bonds will are predicted to have over the year. So for Tommy and Tammy test, by the end of 2020, Orion projects that they're going to have $25,000 of dividends and interest payments paid out to them. It also has similar information as the overview tab where it kind of breaks down your different holdings, what the price is. And then it also, if you go further down, once you get past all this, it'll also show you your individual mutual fund performance as well. So it'll run for the period, month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and then a one year. So those are the four, uh, five different sections that we have here. And then all the way at the bottom, it also shows you your benchmarks. That's that. And it also give you the same, uh, the same section. So period through one year. Now, like I said, this is a pretty lengthy report, 
we do have a version called the one page general summary. That's here. And what this is, this is a simplified, simplified version of the quarterly review performance. Uh, this basically has um, the main information. It, it doesn't really break down your accounts and your holdings and the performance of, of those of those things, but it will give you a pretty good overview of, of where you're at. So it'll give you market value, gives you that estimated annual income, and then also give you an activity summary. And then if you wanted your return, that's that's the time weighted return net down here. The next report I wanted to show you is the purchase and sale reconciliation. So you've probably gotten tons of statements from Schwab where there's any activity or trades in your account. What this report does is it kind of cleans that up and puts all the information on one page for every account. So to demonstrate that, this is what it looks like. And depending on how, however many accounts you have is however many pages it'll be. So for Tammy's IRA rollover, shows you the period. I ran it for, for, last, for last year. <clears throat> It groups all the buys together. It shows you what day the buy happened, how many shares, the security, the price that it was bought at, and the overall amount. And it also gives you the same information for sales, what, what day it was sold on, how, how many were sold, what was sold, and the price it was sold for. And then it gives you a net number down here. And the last report I wanted to go over was the income realized gain and loss summary. So this breaks down where your income is coming from into more detail. And um, the information here isn't as, isn't as detailed as I, as I would like it just because it is a demo account. Um, but this shows you a couple different things. It shows you your dividends, interest payments. It'll actually, on the bottom here, it'll show you which funds are giving you those dividends and interest payments and break down how much it was. It also shows you your realized gain and loss, which is the gain and loss when you sell out of a security. That's this right here. So the last tab I wanted to show you is the planning tab. And this link or this tab goes into Money Guide Pro. Um, and this is the link to get into that. Money Guide Pro is a site where you can manipulate different retirement scenarios. Uh, this we use to determine of the viability of a long-term financial plan. So since there's a lot of features that involve Money Guide Pro, we've created an entirely separate training session for this. So to do that, you would have to click on the Money Guide Pro training video featured on the jfltotalwealth.net webinars site. Uh, and you would go to that to to access that video. We hope you found this training session helpful. If you have any questions about the client portal, please contact me at this number, or you can send me an email as well. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you soon.